gentlemen, we have a guest here, the amazing star from BMF, from Snowfall, the booking magnet, Christine Horn, ladies and gentlemen, Hammond Park. Yeah. I like that. Right, all around. That's how you do it up. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining Thank us. You so much. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and hop right into it. Um, how did your journey into acting get started? Uh, well, I've always wanted to be an actor. You know, when we're in like kindergarten or first grade and they say, what do you want to be when you grow up, Timmy? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> singer, actor, dancer. I just always knew. Um, and grow, I grew up in, in the Bronx, New York, and my mom put me in dance classes. So I started in jazz, tap, ballet. My mom took me to see all kinds of plays, Broadway, off-Broadway, uh, Chitlin Circuit, didn't matter. Um, so it was always uh, in me. And when we moved to Atlanta in the 90s, I went to high school here in Atlanta. Um, and that's where I really got deep into the magnet program that we had at Tri-Cities High School. It's the same school Keenan Thompson, Candy Burris, Outcast went to, you know, one of the best high schools here. Um, and that's where I met my mentor, Freddie Hendricks, and he changed my life. He had a youth theater company called the Freddie Hendricks Youth Ensemble of Atlanta. I started performing professionally when I was like 16, doing local theater around town. And it's kind of like started from there, you know, and uh, I don't like to say and the rest is success. Like, no, the rest was hard. I worked two jobs, three jobs and did auditions and all the things, but that's how it started. Um, I always knew I wanted to do it. And it was just a process of me getting to those opportunities. That's great. I know wow. for a lot of us, that's also on entertainment, trying to break into acting. Um, you know, we go through that, through that struggle of, you know, working two, three jobs, you know, trying to get the gigs here and there. And you always, we see you online, you always speak so much light into your students and others when giving advice. Um, where does that mentality come from? Because, because we love it. It's very encouraging. It just comes from my own life. You know, I always tell people, you can't tell me I'm wrong and how I coach because I'm only sharing what I've been through. Mm -hmm. And the, the way I like to approach giving back, I just believe in lifting as I climb. I know what it's like to feel stuck, talented, frustrated, confused. You see people around you working. You don't know what it is that you're doing wrong. Why won't anyone give you a, a tip, a leg up or anything? So I just, I've been on the other side of it. And so I, I think that's why people resonate with me because I'm very transparent. I'm very vulnerable. I'm open. I'm a giver. I operate from an abundant mindset. You can't take anything from me. I can't take anything from you. So with that being said, I just share, you know, and I'm grateful that God has gifted me with the ability to touch people's hearts and souls. And that I, if I can explain something in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and execute, then God bless. Godspeed, go do it. And then please pay it forward and pass it on and help somebody else. Just like you all are doing with this show, you know, taking the time to do this out of your schedule. I think it's really important. Um, I just love to see people win. I do. And when I started coaching by accident in 2017, you know, my, this coaching just kind of began with me going live every day on Facebook. I was like, let me just go live. My mom and my cousin was watching. Like, I don't know. Nobody was watching. <laughs> um, and then, but, but with consistency and just showing up, people just started to raise their hand and ask questions. And I noticed there was a lot of brown people, a lot of people who looked like me, who didn't have the resources, mm -hmm. connections. And I was like, God, this is really important. Um, even in the coaching space, no shade, but I saw there were a lot of white coaches and people who didn't look like us. And it was hard to relate. It was hard to feel like mm -hmm. Possible, and then people will be like, "Just, just by your very existence, you stand as a placeholder, as a beacon that is possible. You can come from the Bronx. You can file bankruptcy. You can live in your mama's basement and start over. You can work three jobs, but that one opportunity is right around the corner." And I, I know that I, I do that, and I just kept showing up. So that's kind of how it started. And so I, people say, well, "Christine, you don't have to do this. You're working." I'm like, "Yeah." But at this point, it feels like an assignment. It's not, doesn't mm. hurt me to give you a tip. <laughs> you know, yeah, on my YouTube yeah. channel, I have over 300 something videos. I'm like, people, people like, I can't afford to work with you. Okay, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I got 300 videos. Have you watched those? Right. <laughs> so don't make an excuse, you know? So um, I, I try to just be there for people as much as I can. Yeah, 
Sure. I mean, we have to. We have to be there for each other. I mean, if not us, who? You know, mm-hmm. who's gonna? Who? We have to help each other out. You know, especially right now, it's very important for us. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely, beautiful, beautifully said too, Christine. And mm-hmm. so, and and I'm thinking. So when you aren't booking and aren't working, what are you doing for fun? Like what? I'm, what is it that Christine like love to do? Uh, I love to play with my dog. I have a big, beautiful dog named Prince. Uh, ah. I have two turtles. Uh, I love to garden. I love live music. I was just at a spot the other day here in Atlanta. Just live music is my jam. Like just being around people and feeling energy. And um, mm. I, love to movies. Um, I love to just, I love to cook. I'm an amazing cook. Okay. Uh, for my friends and um just relaxing and pouring into myself. I love facials and massages and spoiling myself and resting. Mm. <laughs> Double <laughs> and on the travel. rest. Traveling, I think traveling is at the top of the list as far as things that I love to do. Uh, traveling gives me that new, like, if I'm not on a plane once a month, at least I feel COVID was messed me up, man. Cause I was, I'm used to just at least, even, I don't care if I'm going two hours away or to another country. <laughs> be on a plane it just for me it just makes me feel like I'm doing something and my my spirit needs that yeah that's mm. amazing I mean so with you saying that you love to travel what's the most breathtaking place that you've traveled to uh Africa South Africa I just got back from South Africa in February I was there for three months working on a new tv show mm. and Johannesburg just there was just so many breathtaking moments view mm. skylines just so yeah so far it's that you, you know what god bless you for saying that because that's on my next list of places i want to go next i like if i go out i do out the country africa first i gotta go there first yeah. i have to yeah it, have was, to. it was on mine and for years I mean, you know when i was doing lion king i had i swear i met a lot of south africans because we have a lot of south african uh singer actors in the show it was just it just never happened. And then last year I was like, my birthday's in December. So I was like, and that's what I got in, in South Africa. I was like, I'm I'm just gonna go. And I'll go for like 10 days. And God just was like, just wait a minute, just chill out. And God just blew my mind and ended up booking a gig, was able to be there for three months, like in a very much cuter way than I would have been for 10 days. <laughs> uh so that's good though. You you, you got the intention set, James. So it's gonna mm. work itself out. I want to go to South Africa too. That's definitely on the list. Yeah. There, and I definitely want to go to like Paris. I've always wanted to go to Paris. Too, it's on the list. I don't speak French. Too. I speak Spanish. I don't speak French, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll learn enough words. So yeah, it's on the list. So let's just do it as we can. And it's important to make that vision board, even if it's in your mind. Just be very clear what you want, and because mm. you never know how it will come to fruition. I think that's the most exciting thing about life. Yeah, it's experience in life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about um now you touched on a little bit how you got started with giving advice and now you call it Hollywood Bound Actors. That's the Instagram group, correct? That's our community, yeah. Because yeah. what happened when I started coaching, well, started giving tips and all these people, I could tell they just needed a place to congregate. Yeah. And Hollywood Bound Actors was born. So yes, we have a Facebook group, which is where we do most of our connecting. We do have an Instagram page and a podcast. <sighs> Love it, love it. And I'll be joining it. I think uh, I get the emails and everything else and from it. And I'm just like, Christine, thank you so much. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'll read into it and I'll share it whenever I can. And I just love the advice and everything that you give. So thank you again for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, so you've been on two pretty big shows, uh, BMF uh, as Mabel and Black Diamond on Snowfall. Which they just ended their uh, their final season. Uh, that was which was a great great run. Um, of those two characters, you know, uh, which one did you enjoy playing the most? I can't choose. They they're both awesome, and they're both so different. I think yeah. I just enjoy playing, and I and I mean, I was really tickled when BMF was out and then Snowfall premiered this season that people did not realize I was the same person. Like there were all these memes. Yeah going around like did y'all know this is the same person? yeah like I, I was like well that, that's the beauty of transformation and wigs and, you know I was like well that means I'm really doing a good job and it actually helped to ease yes. up, it helped to ease up some of the pressure Mabel was getting because <laughs> 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 I 
these internet streets. Y'all didn't, people love, it's like Mabel people, she, they love to hate Mabel. Like I was like, y'all gonna miss Mabel though. When Mabel's gone, you're gonna miss yeah. Mabel. <laughs> the drama in for season two. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little biased, but I believe so. What do y'all think? I mean, huh. yes. I think, I think so. I think I'll be, I'll be messing with my friends every time, what's the night? Say, Charles, Charles. And then, like, you, you mess with Mabel and the, the frying pan, all that. I don't want to give away too much for everybody that has not watched it, but you need to go watch it. You did an amazing job. And- <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. I mean, it was just a, it was just so much fun, and and honestly, the the roles were so vastly different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a, as an actor, and I know all of you here are actors. It's just, it's always fun to sink your teeth into something. I think for me in Snowfall, just being a badass with a little comic relief, and you know, it was was fun. But you know, the show, the arc of the show was not about Black Diamond. We supported Franklin. We're there, you know, so kind of just supporting characters. But Mabel was really juicy for me as an actor because I knew she was going to have this arc. And I knew when I auditioned and I met with the production team and the executives and we talked about where this storyline was going to go. Then it was a challenge of, okay, I know people are just going to see her and think homewrecker. So, okay, what's her truth? What's her story? Why is she this way? Like, what are these layers that you can add to her and sprinkle in without giving anything away too quickly, which is always a challenge of an actor. You know, we don't get to see Mabel's vulnerability to maybe episode eight, I think it is. So you can't play that too early. So finding that path for me, that journey was just really enjoyable because, um, I knew the full story I wanted to tell with her. And I know I achieved it because, you know, I, I don't underestimate or take lightly to the fact that Mabel is a triggering character for a lot of people. We all know a Mabel, but I knew that even with that, I needed to represent a Mabel in the best, truest way. Um, and that's why I think it was so effective, whether, you know, people like it or not. I agree. I totally agree. Cause you, you nailed it there. So what, kind of character have you not portrayed yet that you're aiming for? What I'm manifesting next is something, uh, a juicy, dramatic, psychological thriller with some sci-fi elements. That's mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm manifesting next. Because I haven't, I've dipped my toe in sci-fi in some ways, but not, like very specifically. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'm trying to bring the spice. <laughs> what do you say? You're trying to bring the spice. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm excited about that. I don't know what it will be or how it will show up, but yeah, that's that's what's next. That's what I have not done yet that I would love to sink my teeth into. I can see I'm it. looking for it. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I'm really inspired by it's not the same at all. But I, you know, I don't know how you all feel. Like I just love when I watch something that inspires me to be a better mm. actor. And recently, I just finished Swarm with um, Dominique Fishback. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazon Prime. And it's performances like that that just make me want to step my game up and make me feel inspired to be an artist. And Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, want, I want someone to feel that watching me do something. And I don't feel like I've done that something yet. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I have for somebody. But for me, I just know how I felt on the inside watching every episode of her and her subtleties. And oh, mm. just, I love to study TV. I mean, that's what I do. That's what I teach. Yeah. So to me, watching television is like a game. I put my detective hat on. I d- dissect it. I still enjoy it, but I dissect it in a very special way because I'm looking like, what can I borrow? What can what work? What can I try on next time? So mm. love it. Uh, always looking to like better yourself. That's amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah. We always have to keep, you know, getting better at whatever it is that we're doing, you know, with this basketball, writing, you know, photography, whatever. I mean, what if that's your craft, you know, we have to, like, just try to push ourselves to be a better, you know, version of ourselves than where we're yeah. at now. Absolutely. Okay, well, um, the way you give back to the community, right, is, is by helping others with acting. But what is on Christine's bucket list of what do you want to have accomplished at the end of your career when it's all said and done? For me, I mean, I personally feel like I'm going to be Cicely Tyson up in this thing. I'm going out on the limb. Um, 
I think the biggest thing for me is just to keep living a life that I love. Something I tell when I'm when I'm on YouTube or doing a Facebook or Instagram live, I always say, like, I'm here to teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. And that is my goal for people who connect with me and for myself. And so as long as I'm consistently happy with what I see in the mirror, when I'm in my quiet time alone, and I'm at peace with who Christine is, I think I'm living a successful life. And I know I've already left a legacy, a positive mm -hmm. one. <laughs> let's, let's be specific, a positive legacy. And I just intend to continue to build on that. And when I get tired and no longer coach or do anything, I believe that legacy will already have lived on through people. And my goal is to just enjoy this beautiful life that God has gifted. Yes. Love it, love it, love it. Man, a couple more questions and we can get you out of here. That was a beautiful response too, by the way. I never so, asked that question, I don't, but that's just, yeah, that's, um, yeah. I think that's what we should all, I think it's, I think it's all internal. Our, our decision and deciding what success is for us. And when we know we've had done a job, well, have a, have a job well done. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. it starts from the inside out. Only you can really decide what that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. beautifully said. Beautifully yes. said. So let's put you in the director's chair real quick. And we'll ask you one more question, get you out of here. Now, who would the booking magnet cast her own TV show or film? Mm. Oh, so like, if someone was to portray me? Like, or like, if you were, let's put you in the director's chair, right? And you're doing the casting for your own TV show or film. Who would be like your top six actors that you would pick? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. I, I think... Yeah. I think the, te the answer that's probably tempting is is our actors that we already know of and celebrities we already know of. But I believe it would be actors from my community who y'all don't even know their names yet. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm surrounded by so much talent. And there's so many times where I'm coaching my my private clients or the students in my Book More TV course. And I'm like, golly, when the world gets to know your name, it's going to be ridiculous. So... Yeah, I would I would say it would be it would come from my community. And honestly, if I were if I were casting a project, the first place I'd put a casting notice is in my community. I'd send it out to my mailing list first because I know I have mm -hmm. a that I'm surrounded by. Are there any students that you want to put a little shine on tonight? Today? No, you ain't gonna get me in the, you ain't gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they might have me to say my name. <laughs> they nope. See? Ah, you tried to get me. No, I, I will say I will say this though. I do have um you know I there's too many. I think yeah. I I get so moved by the 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 people I get to work with. Um and I, I think I learned, not I think, I know I learned that from my mentor, Freddie Hendricks. I just have to shout him out. Every interview I do, I shout him out. And it's, be, it's because and he actually is still, he just went back to teach at Tri-Cities High School in Atlanta. And I think he's 70 years old now, almost 70. Um, and he don't have to do it. You know what I mean? But he is. And something that he's always taught is like, I call, I call it the love blueprint. So in our youth theater company, and this is important for you to hear, um, there were like over a hundred high schoolers in this theater company it ranged from like ages, not just high school, as young as like eight years old and up, you know, and he had a way, all these kids, a lot of, think about all that energy of kids and teenagers and hormones and rehearsing every day. Just imagine that because mm -hmm. every piece we did was an ensemble and he had a way of talking to each one of us as if we were the only ones in the room. Before a competition or before a show, he knew to pull me over to the side and say, hey, Christine, you know, I saw the last performance. She really was really good, but you got to just step, you know, focus. And then he'd go to somebody else. He'd put a bug in. And so whenever anyone talks about Freddie Hendricks, which is why I shout his name, you would, you would think they were the only ones who's ever worked with him privately. Mm -hmm. I had that gift. And what I told him, and I've told him, 
he has passed, you talk about a legacy, that's what he's passed on to me. And so when I look at the testimonials and that students that I've worked with, especially privately or in my, again, my group programs, and I listen to how they talk about me, and this isn't just me boasting myself up. I just, it sounds like, it's the same person, but different people because it's coming through different people. And so that is really, to me, the greatest gift that people are able to get what they need from our my interaction with them and my time spent with them. I think that is really a gift. And seeing people, being able to pinpoint somebody's strength mm -hmm. and their weaknesses, you know, help them bring awareness to that with love. You don't mm -hmm. have to yell at people. You don't have to, you know, degrade them to make change. Like all of that is very powerful to me. Um, and the older I get um, and the wiser I get in this industry, I just think that's so important to nurture because nurturing doesn't, it's not just about kids. It's about the 40 year old, you know, woman who's just got a divorce and is starting over and needs to be nurtured and cared for. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, my male pool is kind of small in my coaching because a lot of the guys in my community sometimes think they know it all. But the ones who are are aware within themselves enough to know, hey, I need help too. <laughs> and they, I see them get transformation, and then that spills over into how they lead their households. Like that's mm -hmm. just. Um, so yeah, I can't pull one student, but I will say just anyone who's been connected to me um, to watch their growth is really inspiring. And I know you're an acting coach too, so I'm sure you get that same fulfillment. Um, when you see people get it and they get a win and they, you know, that's it's just a beautiful thing. It is. It really is. Yes. Okay. So um, is there any advice that you would like to give to someone that's fighting for their dream? Yeah, I would say first, stop fighting. <laughs> you're not fighting. You're, you're just stay in alignment with what you want. And here's what I mean by that. And forgive my woo-woo words because I'm a student of law of attraction and just I'm <laughs> attracting things. Mm -hmm. So fight to me sounds like a battle. Yeah. So I believe if a dream is in your heart, it's for a reason. That burning in your belly, I believe God put a goal in your brain. You would not be given the vision for something that is not meant to come to pass. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So I would say stay focused. Remember that your vision is your vision. It's like putting somebody else's glasses on. Somebody can get your glasses and be like, oh, those things are strong. Oh my God. Because <laughs> that's not, it's not set to your vision. It's set to my vision. You're not supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. So people are not going to under always understand, especially in the beginning when that shit is rocky and rough and you ain't making no money. The opportunities don't seem to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, people be like, you ain't did Tyler Perry yet? You're like, there's more acting than Tyler Perry. <laughs> I'm so successful. I did a commercial two weeks ago. Like, you know, so like, and shout out to Tyler. I work with him, but yeah. I just, especially black folks, honey, if you, ain't, if you can't say Tyler Perry, they don't think it exists. Oh, they gonna love this one. <laughs> <laughs> and look, don't be, I love Tyler. We work together, right. but my whole point is everyone has a different standard of what they perceive as success. Right. Just because someone has never watched the show. People know me now because I'm Mabel on BMF and Snowfall. Check my IMDb credits. I've been mm. working. Mm. You just mm. make watch the show don't mean I haven't been working. So I would say you, any for anyone with, with a dream, and not just an acting dream, but a dream, focus on your vision and let nothing keep you from getting to it. Mm -hmm. And also don't be discouraged if you have to do other things to help support that dream. I tell mm. people all the time, Work two jobs if you need to. Do what you got to do because things cost money, no matter what your dream is. If you're an entrepreneur, my little sister's a nail tech. Well, she got to have money to buy the equipment to do the nails. Like as an actor, you need headshots and classes. So there's no shame in providing for yourself. We are grown ass people. We need mm -hmm. to work. We need to have money coming in. So I think sometimes we can get discouraged by, dang, I'm not doing this full time. But no, you are. I posted a TikTok today, like the first step to becoming an actor is just to declare that you are so, period. Whether you're getting paid for it or not. So that would be my thing. Stop, don't think of it as a fight. Know that you are already are what you desire. So I would say on a constant daily basis, I would speak life to that. People say, why do you call yourself a book and magnet? It's because, well, I'm a student of law of attraction. I know this is a long answer, but just stay with me. Mm -hmm. I 
I know that I can attract things to me. I learned that I can attract people, money, energy. Okay. If I'm literally a magnet, like each and every one of us is, that means I'm attracting things to my life. And I was like, well, shit, I can attract bookings. Well, I am a booking magnet. I believe in mantras and affirmations. I look in the mirror and say, I am health. I am wealth. I am beauty. I am joy. Well, I am. Yana Van Sant said, anything you say after I am is a prayer. I took that to heart. So mm-hmm. I am. What am I speaking? I get to speak life or death into myself. It's like mm-hmm. a light, positive or negative. A light is not going to be kind of on. No, it's on or off. Positive mm-hmm. or negative. And every day you get to decide. Every moment. Even if you catch yourself in a negative moment. Oh, shoot. I'm dark. Let me go light. How can I change that thought around? Right. Change your thought, you change your life. And that is powerful. So the biggest, biggest tip I will say, I will leave us with, and as you can see, I'm passionate about it, is personal development. Work on yourself and master your mind every single day. It's like daily armor. And that doesn't matter. I don't care what field you're in. So go to YouTube in the morning instead of Watching the news, turn on YouTube and listen to Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Eric Thomas, Zig Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Lisa Nichols, Louise Hay, Abraham, anything that sets your intention. I would do that every day before I would go to my day job. If I had to be in my day job at eight and I would be late, I would get there like nine, but I would say eight. So, I mean, I would wake up at six to make sure I had at least 30 minutes to have some tea, journal, and listen to some positivity. While I sat in Atlanta traffic driving to my job that I knew I was better than, <laughs> I would play one of the people I mentioned on the way. I called it my four wheel university. I was like, this is for free. I would get YouTube, cassettes, this didn't matter. Cause I knew that job didn't define me. I knew yeah. the big vision for my life. And so <laughs> before I give y'all eight hours, I'm going to give me some time and I'm going to pour into me. And same thing on the way back home. And so that's, there's an, again, no shame in making your living. However, you got to make it, but don't, don't be afraid to wake up early and stay up late to work on the real dream because you're one opportunity away. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you. I'm on my soapbox. No, 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 word. <laughs> <Bull word. laughs> thank you for saying that. Well, yeah. Number one, thank you for sharing that. Two, thank you for staying past your time to share that. And nothing, that, we needed that full word right there. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> chop, chop that piece up and share, please, because that's that's the game changer. You know, <laughs> no matter what, no matter what, no one can take your personal work away from you. And personal development is personal. You got to do it. So, yes, ma'am. Can hey. nobody do it for you? You got to put in the work. <laughs> Ain't no way. Yes. Please. Trust me. Many people are like, I'm, maybe if I play this loud enough, he'll get it. No, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, there y'all have it, ladies and gentlemen. Christine Horn, the book and magnet. Me, blessings to you and everything that you do. Right, thank you for having me.